The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. You can earn continuing education credits through ACI's online CEU program. Visit www.concrete.org to register. ACI conventions provide an opportunity for networking and for keeping up to date with the latest in concrete technology and practices. Our next speaker uh, is standing in for uh, Professor Asani, who was called out of the country. Um, Murat Saki Oglu is the Vice Dean of uh, University of Ottawa. Um, he's very well known here at ACI. He is going to present uh, for uh, Mo Asani. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Uh, as was mentioned, uh, Professor Asani uh, had to leave the country, and, and he asked me to present his his uh, talk. Um, I'm certainly not affiliated with his uh, um, his technology uh, other than to say that I have done FRP research and, and hopefully I'll be able to answer your questions. Uh, this is concerning use of FRP laminates to uh, repair and mostly retrofit uh, structural components and in this case the emphasis is placed on columns and um, his uh, technology uh, answers some of the challenges in, uh, in practice. One of them pertains to shape and size. Obviously, uh, columns come in different shapes and different sizes, and if it is to be rapid uh, repair technology, the, 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 the technique is supposed to uh, um, answer this challenge. And, and obviously, if you have a circular um, a retrofit material that would develop perfect hoop tension and be more effective, which is not the case for square and rectangular uh, columns. And uh, obviously, as the section size differs, then you have to be ready to handle different size columns. And uh, the new technique that he presents uh, addresses some of these challenges, along with ease in application, uh, the fact that you really do not need sk uh, skilled workers and the fact that uh, this, these FRP laminates can be applied rather rapidly. Uh, in comparison to more conventional uh, wet layup, uh, obviously there are some challenges with wet layup and you have to uh, smoothen the surface and, uh, uh, and uh, you go through a certain preparation phase uh, and then you have to uh, apply FRP with skilled uh, uh, workers. Whereas in the case of laminate, these are pre-cured materials and, and they can create a shell, more like stay in place formwork. And then you can fill the gap between this formwork and, and the column, uh, either by epoxy, injecting epoxy or, or grout. And, and thereby rather quickly you can have this composite action uh, developed. Uh, he developed his technique uh, when he was teaching at the University of Arizona in his own lab. These first generation um, laminates were developed in 1990s. Uh, and then, uh, however, the disadvantage of it that it had to be custom built you had to know the dimension of the column ahead of time, whereas the new technique, he calls it second generation super laminate, uh, developed in 2010. Uh, it's in the form of continuous flexible FRP <coughs> laminates that you can wrap around an existing column, any size, any shape, and then fill the annular uh, gap between the two materials 
and uh, and he claims that it can be done by a handyman. You really don't need skilled labor. Uh, now, the 2010 version of his material uh, is uh, uh, more convenient, easier to apply, and more structurally sound. However, he has not had much time to do the type of research he would like to do, so he's relying on uh, his earlier generation laminates on research, but he says it has to be at least as good as what he has observed in the lab. And this is the earlier generation. As you can see on the left-hand side, he prepared those pre-shaped laminates, and then uh, it had enough flexibility to put around the column, and he did uh, a lot of testing uh, under NSF project, and uh, uh, on the left-hand side, you see the hysteretic relationship of, um, uh, of a control column. And uh, the column was damaged, as you can see, on the lower right-hand side, and due to lack of confinement in the core uh, of the column. And then longitudinal bars bulged out and, and buckled. And then he says it was repaired and retested. Uh, I, I did ask him, but uh, he didn't have time to respond to me as to how he repaired this uh, buckled rebars uh, because his notes reads as if it was simply filled with concrete and then he applied FRP. That may very well be the case. If that is the case, he did get really superior behavior, as you could see, quite a ductile performance uh, after repairing uh, that column with buckled bars. And this is the comparison, control versus repaired. Uh, I believe these columns are about two and a half meters, so the yield corresponds to approximately 1% drift. And in, in the uh, original control specimen, uh, he was not able to go beyond 2%, whereas in the repaired one, he went up to 4% and then ran out of stroke of his actuators, uh, implying that there's more reserved uh, strength and ductility. And uh, then he retrofitted uh, companion specimens, which means the same laminates were applied on undamaged column, and he got similarly good behavior, uh, which then showed that whether you damage and repair or you apply the laminates on uh, undamaged uh, columns, you would get equally same good performance. And in fact, on this slide, you can see black being controlled, red, uh, green being repaired, and red being uh, retrofitted on uh, non-damaged columns. So his conclusion is laminates are effective whether uh, when they are used as repair material or retrofit material. The new uh, super laminate material consists of um, multiple layers and uh, mostly uh, uh, CFRP carbon fibers. The first generation only had transverse fibers, good for confinement, whereas in this one, uh, he also had uh, biaxial carbon fibers, and, and the claim is that it would also contribute to uh, longitudinal flexural tension uh, capacity, um, and uh, I don't believe that has been shown yet. So this is the new generation products. It's flexible enough, but it's laminate, not sheets, that you will be able to wrap it around the column, fill the gap, and then you have ready-to-use product. Uh, these are some of the uh, specifications, and apparently there are similar materials available in the market, and his product uh, appears to have uh, very high strength, going up to 155 KSI. Um, again, a comparison of the old technology versus new laminates. Um, the old one came in narrower widths, four to six inches, whereas the new one can be five foot width, continuous, and you could overlap and you could wrap it around. Unidirectional fibers versus biaxial or bidirectional fibers, and uh, confinement versus confinement plus flexural enhancement. Moreover, superlaminate allows applications that the older technology did not allow, 
And there are a number of examples, including a couple of videos that I'd like to show you. Here is uh, an, an application on repairing a column. Uh, and you essentially form this stainless formwork, and it could be circular or uh, uh, square, and uh, it could be multiple layers, and between each layer you use epoxy to make sure you have sufficient rigidity in the formwork, and uh, uh, you can either put them uh, in single layers of about five foot high and, and build up your, your uh, section one by one, uh, heading filled grout one at a time, or you could have one single continuous spiral uh, winding, as, as I will uh, show you, in which case you will have continuous uh, laminate. Here is uh, one example. Uh, is showing a square uh, wooden column, and you have to put spacers to allow this shape, otherwise it would not develop uh, hoop tension, so it's, it's not elliptical, but it's not uh, rectilinear, it's not square either, and uh, uh, you use essentially PVC pipes to, to raise the, the laminate, and then you can fill uh, the gap between the two materials. And once again, if, if he were to compare this with other materials, um, uh, he claims that there are no weak seams in this material, and the strength is very high, and it does provide confinement as well as axial flexural strengthening, and, uh, uh, and then there's no problem in injecting grout or, or epoxy. Uh, and obviously, uh, this need not be custom built, and it has the flexibility of being uh, uh, able to be used for different size, different uh, shape Columns. And here is the comparison of tensile strength. I, I'm assuming these are coupon tests of the laminates. And whereas his material goes way beyond what's available in the marketplace, and uh, this is one of the advantages uh, according to him. And here are some of the examples. It can be used in water as well. Uh, and uh, uh, this video shows you repairing this is not seismic repair, but uh, repairing a deteriorated uh, building column, and uh, everything is placed on site. Uh, the, the epoxy is uh, supplied as in two components, but uh, just enough to make the right proportion of mixture, and then they put straps to hold them in place until epoxy is cured and the grout is, is injected and the end product is pleasant looking uh, finish which does not require any further finishing. And then there's an argument on how confined concrete has higher strength and the, the, the stronger the material is, the more enhancement there will be in axial capacity. And there's a design example ignoring contribution of longitudinal reinforcement 490 kips in this case. This is concentric capacity of unconfined uh, concrete. And then uh, he's looking at various different scenarios. This is uh, encasing square column in circular uh, uh, laminate. And then there is extra strength due to confinement because of the higher strength of, of these laminates. And another animation showing repair uh, uh, underwater piles. You essentially prepare this uh, above the water level and then you simply insert it in. I guess you pump the water out and then you fill uh, uh, grout and, and there are various techniques to seal them at the bottom. Uh, is talking about bicycle uh, uh, tube type uh, in place seals at the bottom and uh, at the top epoxy seals, and this is how you uh, retrofit uh, uh, existing column. Now, I'd like to show you a couple of couple of videos that he supplied, and uh, the first one is application on uh, a post utility pole, uh, and and here you can see. I guess the point he's trying to make is how easy it is to use. 
but I, I meant to ask him when the epoxy is applied. I guess he just wants to show how you can wrap it around. There's no epoxy application. In this case, I'm assuming you have to, you have to glue it with epoxy, uh, at one point. But, but the, this two man crew, uh, uh, is, is able to wrap it around rather quickly, uh, in terms of practicality of, of this laminate. Now, the next application is on corroded st steel columns. And, and once again, uh, there's a quick video that shows these are uh, steel columns, not concrete. Uh, and you just have to uh, clean the, the rusted area and fill it with grout. And then you do essentially the same thing. You cut this laminate piece on site and then put it around. In this case, they're showing application of epoxy, and then you just wrap it around and then uh, pressure grout injection. Uh, and, and this this time, uh, it's, a, it's a slightly different application, but it, it's on a column. Uh, another bridge column, this is done for Missouri DOT, and uh, these are, again, uh, steel columns, uh, I believe I sections. One of the advantages of this, this technology, you don't need to cut a big trench. Obviously, in, in the conventional application, you have to clear the earth around the, the, the column uh, below the uh, ground level. In order to be able to work comfortably, you have to wrap it down to the foundation level. Whereas in this case, because you prepare the, uh, um, the laminate outside and then you can just insert it in, you don't need as much clearance, and, and he thinks that's a big construction advantage. And here is one other application. Uh, basically, the procedure is the same. You just uh, cut it uh, at the job site and apply epoxy and then wrap it around. And, uh, and here you can see the, the, the amount of digging that they had to do is quite a bit limited, but they then subsequently uh, lower this down and then uh, fill the annular space with, with filler material. In this case, I believe it's grout. Well, with that, I'd like to conclude his presentation. Thank you for your attention. If there are any questions that I can answer, I'd be happy to do so. Thank you. How this solution is taking care of crushed concrete of existing columns? Um, he did not mention, but I'm assuming because he did talk about um, uh, repairing damaged concrete, I'm assuming that you have to clear this first and then fill it with fresh concrete. There are two questions that I, I was curious myself. One of them is what happens to steel that was buckled or yielded? And the other one is he's talking about flexural strengthening. How would you anchor this to the foundation? Uh, I guess if the flexural critical point is along the height of the column, that's one thing, but if the critical point is at the footing column intersection, then it needs to be anchored, and that I don't know how he would do. Has uh, this uh, procedure been used to increase the shear strength of that, the column to avoid premature yes, failure? Yes, this is one question I did ask him, and I got an answer because I was curious myself. He said yes, because these fibers crossing diagonal, potential diagonal tension crack, and they're supposed to also act as shear reinforcement. Do you have to consider that in some cases, especially in uh, rectangular columns, uh, there is a change of the thickness of the structure so you have to consider that in the design of the reinforcement? Yes. Uh, st only stiffness or, or mass as well? Uh, stiffness, uh, the general stiffness of the structure. Yes. For seismic application. That's right. Um, you have to consider that as you have to consider with any other jacketing procedure, right? If you do steel jacketing, you have to consider it concrete jacketing, FRP jacketing. Yes, you do have to. Uh, I guess that's part of the design process. Rod, thank you very much.